Good morning. A terrorist attempted to stab passengers on a public bus in Jerusalem and was finally neutralized by a heroic photographer. After a bullet was fired from Gaza into an industrial area, the IDF responded by striking a Hamas military post. Uh, the U.S. State Department revealed their hypocrisy in a new statement, and the United Nations, believe it or not, is demanding that Israel release a terrorist. I'm Justin, and this is the Israel Guys Daily. Welcome to the Israel Guys Daily, where we cut through the fog of fake news to bring you the accurate headlines from Israel. Good morning, guys. Another beautiful day. Thanks for joining me here on the show today. Um, we're going to jump right in here with our first headline. So yesterday, um, there was a stabbing attack in Jerusalem near the uh, remote mall. It was on a public bus. Um, so a, the, the terrorist, he was a resident of Ramallah uh, in his 40s. We're not going to say his name. Uh, we'd like to here on the Israel Guys, we uh, like to not name the terrorist because it gives too much credit um, to him. Uh, it, so this terrorist, he was actually um, an Israeli civilian um, citizen, I guess, uh, but he lived in Ramallah. Anyways, he was on a public bus in Jerusalem and he started stabbing passengers with a screwdriver. Uh, the bus driver, of course, stopped immediately and opened the doors to let the passengers um, escape. The passengers uh, all started jumping off the bus um, and the terrorist also jumped off and was still trying to attack people as he was getting off. Uh, it was craziness happening, um, but a passerby, he noticed uh, what was happening and he pulled out a gun and shot the terrorist, and thankfully, he was neutralized. Um, so the man who shot the terrorist uh, was identified as Meshi Ben Ami, who was a photographer uh, for Yediot, Aharanot, and Ynet. Way to go, photographer. I'm an amateur photographer, so yeah, way to go, photographers. Um, ben Ami said, uh, quote, in the afternoon, I picked up my three-year-old son and traveled with him for a fun day in central Jerusalem. Uh, when we reached the junction where the incident happened, I noticed that something was happening on the bus in front of me. The doors opened, people ran out, and I saw a figure stabbing someone. Uh, I got out of the car, loaded the gun, and realized it really was a terrorist attack. Uh, I saw a bleeding, wounded man. Then I approached the terrorist. I did not hesitate. I fired one bullet at him, and he lay on the floor. The security personnel arrived a second and a half after I neutralized him. So thank God uh, he was very quick thinking. Seems like a lot of the, uh, the citizens of Israel have been trained. Sadly, uh, with all the terrorism that's happened, they've been kind of trained to uh, be quick thinking and on their feet. Uh, but thank God for this. Uh, apparently, though, this isn't the t uh, first time this guy has stopped a terrorist attack. He said, quote, this is the second time I have neutralized a terrorist. If someone has concerns about their personal security, maybe because of the place he lives in, I recommend that he undergo a weapons training course legally, obviously, in order to protect himself. That's a great idea. Uh, Prime Minister Yerlapid said, quote, I would like to convey a speedy recovery to the wounded who were hurt in the stabbing incident in Jerusalem. I congratulate the Ynet photographer who entered the arena and acted resolutely to neutralize the terrorist and prevent further harm to other people. We will not allow terrorism to raise its head and disrupt the routine of our lives. We will take accounts with anyone who tries to harm innocent civilians. Um, so yesterday, um, a bullet was found in the community of Netiva, of Netiv, Ha'asara, excuse me, um, and it was proved that it was shot from Gaza. After an inquiry, it was found that the bullet hit an industrial building um, after being fired from the Gaza Strip. So, in response, the Israeli Air Force took action. Their fighter jets uh, struck a military post belonging to Hamas um, in northern Gaza. Um, I think just four days ago, uh, several rockets were actually uh, fired out of Gaza as well from Hamas. And the IDF took swift response and struck several military posts. They're very on the feet and um, good at striking back immediately. Along the lines of counterterrorism, though, um, yesterday the IDF conducted more raids in Judea and Samaria. Uh, a lot of towns there. They arrested 11 suspects. Uh, there was a little bit of fighting, I think. Uh, Palestinians uh, were throwing uh, rocks and other stuff at the vehicles. But 
uh, no IDF injuries were reported. Um, moving along, the U.S. State Department, they, um, they put out a new statement. They're urging countries that have not yet put um, Hezbollah on the blacklist. Um, they're urging them to do so now. Which in itself, in in itself, is a great statement. I 100% agree with this. But um, as I'm going to talk about after I read the statement, it's very hypocritical of them right now. So the call was made by State Department spokesperson Ned Price in a statement released on Monday. The anniversaries of the 1994 bombing of the AMIA Jewish Community Center in Buenos Aires and the 2012 attack on a tour bus in Burgas. Uh, Bulgaria carrying Israeli tourists. Uh, both attacks were carried out by Hezbollah. He said, quote, the single deadliest anti-Semitic attack in more than half a century, the AMIA bombing uh, underscored Hezbollah's global ambitions and is a clear example of uh, Iran's support of international terrorism. High-level Iranian government officials were directly implicated in the attack and Hezbollah carried it out at the direction of the Iranian regime. While no one responsible for the attack has been brought to justice, the United States believes all Argentines deserve to have those responsible held accountable for this despicable and cowardly attack. So, first of all, to get this straight, I 100% agree with this statement um, that other countries need to be putting Hezbollah on the blacklist and those cowardly actions, these terrorist attacks, horrible terrorist attacks that happened. Um, and it's great that the U.S. is recognizing Hezbollah as a terrorist organization, but this is very hypocritical of them because who did uh, Joe Biden meet with last Friday? None other than Mahmoud Abbas. And uh, Josiah talked about it more fully on his show two days ago. You should go back and watch that if you haven't yet. Um, but he met with Mahmoud Abbas, who is a known terrorist. Um, he planned, uh, he was one of the masterminds of the Munich massacre uh, of the Israel, uh, Israeli Olympic athletes, and he pays the salaries of hundreds of terrorists who have murdered Israeli civilians and who are sitting in Israeli jails. Um, he's uh, a terrorist, and Joe Biden met with him. They seemed on great terms, um, and now um, the U.S. State Department is condemning Hezbollah, which is great in itself. But why are they not condemning Mahmoud Abbas and treating him as a terrorist as well? Um, that's my question for today. But moving along, uh, there's some craziness happening. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised by this anymore. Uh, but the UN, you're not going to believe this. They recently demanded that Israel release a terrorist who stabbed a child. Uh, in 2015... A 13-year-old boy and his cousin, who was 15, we're not going to name their names again, the terrorist, uh, they stabbed and seriously wounded a 13-year-old Jewish boy and a 21-year-old man. The cousin was shot and killed following the attack, and the boy was struck by a car while he was fleeing the scene. Uh, he was arrested and convicted for two counts of attempted murder. Uh, his original sentence was 12 years of prison, but um, it was later reduced to only nine and a half years. So Israel is already being uh, very lenient on this uh, terrorist. Now, the UN is demanding that Israel release him. The UN experts uh, said that, quote, his arrest and detention happened over a span of time, which is absolutely critical for the emotional, intellectual, and social development of a child. And all actions concerning children... The best interest of the child must be a primary consideration. In violation of this fundamental principle, the overriding consideration in this case appeared to be Israel's focus on containing whoever they label as terrorism threats. Wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This boy actually committed a terrorist attack. <laughs> Israel's not just detaining random people uh, who they're labeling as terrorism threats, as the UN seems to think here. This boy actually committed a terrorist attack, and that's why he is in prison. And about the um, social, uh, emotional, intellectual development of the child, uh, that's true. That's true that that's important. But why are the UN not talking about their own schools, their UNRWA schools, um, where they're teaching Palestinian children to murder Jews? I think that is... Um, very damaging for the emotional and intellectual development of a child. Um, and they're not talking about that at all. They went on to say, 
Quote, the gut-wrenching scenes of a child with broken bones lying on the ground under a barrage of insults and threats shouted by armed adults in a foreign language of that very same boy being spoon-fed by unfamiliar hands while chained to a hospital bed and then violently interrogated in breach of human rights norms and principles concerning arrest and detention of a child continue to haunt our conscience. So, the UN is basically saying it's not against human rights to attempt to murder Israelis and Jews, but it's against human rights norms to detain a terrorist. And by the way, Israel Israel is not, um, there's not scenes of this child with broken bones lying on the ground and insults being uh, cast at him or anything. This is not what's happening. The experts here, the UN experts, they never once acknowledged that this boy had committed the heinous attack for which he was convicted. Also, earlier, they were talking about the social and intellectual development of a child. What about the 13-year-old child who was stabbed by this terrorist? What about him? What about the uh, PTSD that he might be feeling right now? Uh, What about... They never talked about him at all. They're choosing to focus on the terrorist instead of the victim, which is absolutely mind-blowing and crazy. Um, But Shai Glick, uh, the director general of the Betsalmo organization, I think he summed it up pretty good. He said, quote, "Instead instead of embracing the victims of the attack to visit them and check whether they have recovered or are still suffering from PTSD, The UN chooses to take care of the terrorist who tried to murder children in an extremely cruel manner. We intend to appeal to the UN to acknowledge the victims of the attack. And of course, we demand that the Israeli government reject the UN demand emphatically. We will continue to care for the human rights of the citizens of Israel. That's um, completely right. Israel is a very moral country. And they care about people and they're not committing these human rights violations as the UN is trying to say. But anyways, guys, we close out here. Um, I want to talk about national anthems for a minute. So uh, a few days ago, a social media influencer from Saudi Arabia, um, I think after the peace agreements that have happened between Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel recently, he played Israel's national anthem on the oud, which is a traditional Middle Eastern in, um, like guitar kind of thing. Uh, and I'll play the video here. Mohammed Saud. Uh, the guy who played this, he posted a video on Twitter uh, playing the Hatikva with the caption, preparing for peace and normalization, practicing in the meantime. And this is in comparison with another national anthem that was played last Friday by none other than the Palestinian Authority Honor Guard uh, for to honor Joe Biden when he visited the PA in Bethlehem. So Biden comes up and the Palestinian Authority Honor Guard attempted to play the American national anthem, um, and they failed very miserably, as you will see here. Wow, that just sounds beautiful. (laughs) I think at least half the band is off key here. Guys, I'm sorry for putting you through that torture of having to listen to that national anthem. But if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube. Or if you're just listening on your favorite podcast platform, uh, make sure to leave us a comment, drop us a like, uh, write us a review. Um, As Christians, our mission is to stand unconditionally with the land and people of Israel. I'm Justin Hilton, and this is the Israel Guys Daily. Daily.